what we're supposed to do and lift everybody up, take people to the polls to vote. Because our fathers and foreparents fought too hard for us to sit on the sideline. So let's get out and vote. Amen. Good morning, church. What a joy. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that my son, Ezra Stone Diaz, is with us this morning. And I want you to say hello, son. Say hello. Uh, it is good to be back in the house of the Lord. You can sit down, buddy. Thank you. Um, Pastor Porter, what a joy to be back with you after some time at the Baptist General Convention. Earlier this week, we were here also past Sunday. And the Sunday before that, we launched a missional movement called Chosen. Do y'all remember? Yeah. Well, the time has come for those of you who said, I want to be chosen by a little boy or a little girl. The time has come for you to see who chose you. And so today we will celebrate in the fellowship hall the, the revelation, the reveal of the little boy or the little girl that chose you. I also want to say that 24 children in Mozambique walked down a red carpet, saw your faces, and decided to step into a relationship with you. And so we're excited, yes, we're excited to see who those little boys and girls are, but we're also excited to see why they chose you. And so inside of the envelope which we will hand you at the fellowship hall there's a little link that will take you to a website where you can actually download the letter that this little boy or little girl wrote to you and they're going to tell you why they chose you and those are precious moments i also just want to say thank you thank you i don't want to be like the lepers who did not come back to say thank you to jesus um, our ministry depends on the generosity of Christians around the world. And so you join as a congregation millions and millions of Christians who have decided to put their faith and their hope into practice and to say, I can live my life on behalf of others in service of others because someone other than me, his name is Jesus, did something for me that I could not do on my own. Yeah. And so today we celebrate that we are able to do for others what they could not do for themselves. And so I hope that you join me in the fellowship hall to celebrate this afternoon. Thank you once again, Pastor Paul. And Minister Diaz and Minister Shannon, they were with us at the Baptist General Convention this past week. So they had an opportunity to uh, present and also to meet with pastors and messengers from all over the state. We had a wonderful uh, celebration. We had a good time at the BGC. And during that time, uh, our own Reverend Dr. Johnny E. Hopkins was recognized. If you could stand up, Dr. J. In celebration and recognition, the Reverend Dr. Johnny E. Hopkins, Men's Ministry President 2022 to 2024, is hereby recognized by the Baptist General Convention of Virginia as a faithful, visionary officer with all the rights and responsibilities of worship, witness, and works in the kingdom of God. And it was presented on the third day of July, 2024, by the Baptist General Convention of Virginia under the hand of the President, Reverend Milton Button, and our Executive Minister, Dr. Leo Whitaker. because he was also re-elected as president of the Men's Division. And thank you, Dr. J. And also, I know you had not planned on this, Alexis. I know, I know you had not planned on it, but come down front for a second. We are just so very, very excited. 
And after uh, sharing this announcement, then we're going to do the fellowship period, and then I'm going to call on Generation Inspiration Youth to come down front. In fact, as we fellowship, the youth can remain down front to go off a prayer and dismiss them. I'm so excited, and I want you to know that the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth, is excited because Alexis has been appointed, I'm talking about a presidential appointment, as director and coordinator of our conventions for the Baptist General Convention.
everyone feels welcome to the Lord's house.
All right. Hello? Yeah. All right, I want to say... Second Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Well, the end of body, the Bible of body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, well, the end of body, the Bible of body, I do not know. God knows. Was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no moral, that no mortal is forbidden to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except for my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what he perceived or heard from me. Even considering the exceptional character of the revelation, therefore to keep me from being too elevated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in peace. So I will boast all the more gladly of my witness that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities sick of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. God wants us to consider His Word. He wants us to study His Word. He wants us to experience His Word. But most of all, He wants us to live His Word. May God bless you. Thank you, Dr. J. sharing the scripture. Some of us may have heard already, uh, but I am saddened to report the passing of another member within our church family, and that is the husband of Reverend Gloria Gatlin. Uh, Fred Ken Gatlin uh, passed the other day, and so it was sudden was a shock, so we need to keep the family in prayer, all right? Even as we prepare now to go to the Lord in prayer, uh, we want to keep the family in prayer. We understand that there is power in prayer. We understand that we have an opportunity to go to the Lord in prayer. I'm trying to invite you to help We have an opportunity to lift up our concerns to the Lord. A prayer is an opportunity for us to speak to God. Uh, certainly we know that we can go into our own prayer closets. But there's something about coming together, touching, and agreeing about being on one accord. We know there is power in prayer. And certainly, Reverend Gavin is not the only one who's in need of prayer today. I believe there are persons all over the house today, me included. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. The elder this morning is going to lead us to God's throne of grace. Let's all bow and pray. Oh Lord, our oh God, how good and how sweet and how precious it is to gather in this house in your presence one more time. Well, we can lay down our burdens of this life 
and lift up your name, praises, and in worship, in spirit, and in truth. On this beautiful Lord's Day, you've been so good, so kind, so merciful. You kept the heads around us all week. As a matter of fact, you kept a hedge of protection around us from our earliest existence right to this present time. Thank you, Lord. You provided us with all the necessities of life. Thank you, Lord. You made ways for us during hard times. Thank you, Lord. You continue to give hope, help, joy, and peace in this turmoil of this dark world. You're the source, Lord, of our strength. You're the bridge over the troubled waters of this life. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrificial and your everlasting love, your abundance of grace and mercy, your great faithfulness toward us. You came down through 40 and two generations for our salvation. Thank you, Lord. You've been our dwelling place during the trials and tribulations and the raging storms of this life. Now, Lord, we confess that we are unworthy of all of the blessings, but we are sure enough grateful. And then, Lord, we come lifting our spirits to your high and your holy spirit, praying that uh, you would forgive us of all of our failures, our shortcomings, and our many sins. Sins of commission and sins of omission. Lord, keep us in your care. Help us to live and walk in your word and in your path of righteousness. Then, Lord, we pray that you would bless us and our work as a church. Make us a light in the darkness, an inspiration for our communities, a source of help and hope for the down and out, and be a greater blessing on Wellington Avenue. Then, Lord, be most mindful that all good and perfect gifts come from you, and it is of our own, your own, that we give back to you. Thank you, Lord, for the resources that you've blessed us with. And bless those who made sacrifices for the cause of our mission and ministries. We thank you, Lord, for our leadership. Continue to give him strength, fortitude, clear vision, and wisdom. Then, Lord, bless his family with help joy and peace. And our Lord, we approach this communion period today. Prepare our hearts and our minds for this memorial meal and help us to make peace with each other and forgive each other of our trespasses against each other. Lest we forget the sacrificial love you have for us in spite of ourselves. Lord, bless our children and make this event meaningful in their lives. And as they grow in age, we pray they will grow in your grace. Lord, make us a blessing to the many, many, many less fortunate than we are. You know who they are, where they are, what they stand in need of. We have sick, bereaved, those who are troubled by nature, the storms of nature. And then, Lord, there are those who are down and out, and they are victims of war all over. Let them know, Lord, that you are more than sufficient for all of their needs. And make us, Lord, a blessing to them in every way possible. Then, Lord, we pray and ask a special anointing of your Holy Spirit 
upon our state and our national leaders. Place those, Lord, who know you in our government and our leadership positions. Lord, save our democracy. Save America. Most of all, Lord, let your will be done. These are our petitions. These are our supplications. And this, Lord, is our most earnest prayer. In that matchless, that miraculous name of Jesus. Amen.
church say amen. And amen. We have some, some birthdays uh, this month that we want to, to lift up. We have Beverly Hobbs, your your birthday, your birthday offering. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And your birthday offering, thank you. All right, look, we haven't said we haven't sang happy birthday in a while. I know we have some other July, July babies in the house, Carmen. I know we've got some other July.